Libya, an ageless name that transcends in history and one of the epic narratives in the history of the Mediterranean. It is the bridge to Africa that links the African and Mediterranean civilizations with the rest of the world. Ancient maps identified it as the geographical area between the Nile and the Atlas Mountains where the ancient Labu tribes once lived. Libya is just two hours and 15 minutes away from the heart of Europe and Geneva where the United Nations Palais des Nations is headquartered and dozens of international organizations are based. Libya's ancient history goes back to 125,000 years where the Atrian civilization, one of the oldest civilizations of mankind of the Stone Age, made its home in southern Libya. Rock carving and drawings dating back to more than 8,000 years can be visited and seen still today in the Akakas Mountains Range, a UNESCO protected heritage site. Nearby, the mummy of Wan Muhi Jaj, dating back to more than 5,000 years, was discovered in a small rock cave located in the Chuant Valley. Another wonder is the Al Hatea pyramids in southwestern Libya, where the remains of 20 pyramids that are more than 3,000 years old still stand in defiance of time as a symbol of the Germanic civilization in Libya. From Libya comes the new, a quote attributed to the Greek historian Herodotus, describing the people who lived in ancient Libya, known as the Libu, Tanyu, and Meshwash tribes. The grandson of the head of the Libyan Meshwash tribes, Shoshank I, extended his rule to Egypt and became the founder of the 22nd dynasty of Egypt and ruled for 200 years. His influence extended to Nubia and Palestine. In the 5th century BC, the Phoenicians settled in Libya and established the three cities, Oe, present-day Tripoli, Sabratha, and Leptis Magna. An hour's drive east of Tripoli stands Leptis Magna as one of the few cities with complete archaeological ruins in the world. To the west lies the city of Sabratha, which was founded in the 6th century BC by the Greeks and named it Abrotono. Both Leptis Magna and Sabratha are UNESCO protected World Heritage archaeological sites. After the demise of the Phoenician civilization in the 7th century BC, the Greeks settled in Libya and established their famous ancient cities Barca, present day Lamarge, Bernice or Euseprides, present day Benghazi, Apollonia, present day Sosa, Tokiera, present-day Tukra, and Cyrene, present-day Shahat. The Greeks integrated and blended in eastern Libya with the Libu tribes, and together they contributed to the prosperity of the civilization. The Greeks left some of the best ruins in the world in these famous eastern cities of Libya, which were at the time a hub where civilizations met from the unique, glamorous, and dazzling Mediterranean civilization. In the city of Cyrene, Shahat in particular, there are some unique antiquities nestled in natural beauty. The son of Cyrene, the philosopher Aristotus, gifted the world with the Cyrenaican philosophy. Cyrene is the home to archaeological sites that narrate the history of civilizations that inhabited the city, most notably the site of the city council, the Agora, the Temple of Apollo, the Acropolis Castle, the Temple of Zeus, and many others. Libya's antiquities and ruins were much sought after by European royalty who shipped from the various Libya archaeological cities, marble columns, and other antiquities to be used in the construction of their palaces, including the marble columns used in the construction of the famous Palais de Versailles outside of Paris and the Windsor Palace in the suburb of Surrey in London. Regretfully, many marble statues, artifacts, and valuable monuments continue to be illegally trafficked around the world and through the global criminal enterprise web. It is our hope that one day they will be returned to their rightful and original home, Libya, to be preserved for future generations.
As the Roman civilization expanded to reach North Africa and Libya, the three Phoenician cities were annexed to form Tripolitania, thereafter extending to the east to include the five cities of Pentapolis. The Roman ruins of Tripolitania are still present in a number of historical sites in Libya, the most famous of which is the Ark of the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, which was built in 163 AD and is still standing in the city of Tripoli. There is also a three-story baptistery theater, which is an example of the towering and unique classical Roman architecture. One cannot forget the Roman Emperor Septimius Severus, who was born in the city of Leptis Magna in Libya to Libyan parents. He ruled the Roman Empire and was the last powerful emperor of the Roman civilization. He died in York City in England. When Christianity spread throughout the Roman Empire, it also spread to the ancient cities of Libya as early as Christianity. We find its artifacts spread in various areas in Libya. The monument of Mark the Evangelist west of Lutron in the Green Mountain region is considered one of the most important places where Mark the Evangelist, one of the four Bible writers, lies in a place known until now as the Shrine of Mark. Likewise, the monk's cave in Shak al-Water area near Derna, which is a cave dug on the seashore, is believed to be one of the many caves in the area used by the early Christians for hiding and worshiping. It dates back as early as the first century AD. Moving south to the historical city of Gadames and the jewel of the Libyan desert, where stone carvings indicate the existence of life in this oasis as far back as 10,000 years ago. This city has caves that were used by the Berber queen Daya, known as the Priestess. Gadames was a robust commercial center in its days, as it was a cross point in linking North Africa with its west and south during the times of the Phoenicians, Greeks, Romans, and Arabs. It still maintains its beautiful and unique architecture in an enchanting setting. This ancient city is also a UNESCO World Heritage Protected Site. The Othman Empire expansion reached North Africa and Libya, and for a while its strength and power waned when the Karamanli family was able to form a Libyan state that ruled and flourished until 1836, when the Ottoman Empire restored its control on Libya and ended the rule of the Karamanli family dynasty. In 1911, Libya was occupied by Italy and a national resistance movement sprung against the occupation and continued to 1931, when it was crushed by the capture and execution of one of Libya's most prominent heroes and symbols, Omar al-Mukhtar. By the end of the First World War and in November 1918, Libyans were able to establish the Republic of Tripoli in Western Libya, the first republic in the Arab world. It was later abolished by the Italians. After the Second World War ended and a long struggle against colonialism, Libya was put up for discussion at the United Nations when Libya gained its independence on December 24, 1951, to become the fifth African and seventh Arab country to establish sovereignty on its territory and be recognized as an independent nation. The Kingdom of Libya was declared and King Idris al Sanusi was crowned. Thus, Libya today, on December 24th, 2020, is celebrating its 69th anniversary of independence. In September 1969, the rule of the monarchy ended by a military coup. Muammar Gaddafi took control of the country for 42 years until his oppressive rule was overthrown by the People's Popular Uprising on February 17th, 2011. Today, Libya is in a transitional period trying to get out of the repercussions of the colonial eras and the authoritarian regime so that its people can live freely and prosper in their land. 
Libya has always enjoyed an important geographical and commercial importance since ancient times with its 1,850 kilometer long coastline on the Mediterranean Sea with its sandy beaches and bays that are known for some of the purest on the Mediterranean with stunning beauty and silky golden sand. Libya's coast also enjoys a huge fish wealth that is constantly exposed to piracy. Oil and gas are also found on its coasts, and both represent the primary source of revenue for the country. The Libyan depth extends into the African continent with an area of more than 1,700,000 square kilometers. As it is the fourth largest country in Africa and equals approximately 40% of the area of the European Union, Libya shares with 22 countries the coast of the Mediterranean. To the south of the historic Gulf of Sirt begins the Great Sahara of Libya, the largest dry desert in the world and is characterized by high aridity, making it an ideal source for renewable solar energy. This Libyan desert is also distinguished by its underground waters, oasis, and stunning beauty, and it has three protected World Heritage Sites. Its proximity to the coastal city centers makes it well suitable for desert tourism, sand skiing, desert rally racing, camping, and hunting desert safaris. In addition to oil and gas, the Libyan desert contains large deposits of gold, uranium, and other precious metals in rare soils that are used in manufacturing of advanced nuclear and electronic technology. This has made Libya a target of international ambitions since ancient times. Libya also has a good wealth of olive and palm trees, which produce some of the best types of dates and the finest types of oils. The country also possesses a good wealth of livestock. Libya is an oil rentier state. It has 10 commercial seaports, 13 berths, and oil ports along its coast. It has the largest shale oil reserves in the Arab world and the fifth in the world after Russia, the United States, China, and Argentina, and the second in Africa in shale gas reserves. Libya has a sovereign investment portfolio and a network of companies that manage its financial resources around the world. Life in Libya is concentrated in the cities, the largest of which is the capital Tripoli, a city that has lived for thousands of years as a permanent commercial center and reached its peak in the second century AD. Benghazi is the second largest city and has a cultural and economic status that influences all of Libya. Libya's wealth is also found in its rich and rare cultural heritage that accumulated over the years with a unique demographic diversity due to the mixing of ancient Libyans with many civilizations that settled in Libya over the centuries. This has led to a rich, diverse social fabric in its national customs, traditions, and local languages. The Libyan national dress is also very distinctive and special. Libyans are known to enjoy and master various arts and crafts, including handmade carpets and pottery, painting, singing, dancing, and playing various musical instruments. Many of these were passed from the Libyan ancestors, from African heritage, and from Andalusia. In addition, the singing and music of Malouf, Merskawi, and other folk oral artists are spread widely in several regions of Libya, where they are used in Libyan weddings and local festivals. Riding and horse racing shows take place at weddings and social gatherings and in sports, where horse riders compete in racing against the wind. The specialties of the Libyan cuisine cannot be surpassed by its variety of national dishes like couscous and bazin. Many of the Libyan dishes are shared by North Africans, Mid-Easterners, Greeks, and Italians, as well as the Andalusian cuisine. Green tea has a special place in the history of Libya. While Libyans are proud of their country, history, and civilization, today they strongly strive for stability and openness to the world, for development, prosperity, and keeping pace with the global advancement in all fields. Libya has enormous capabilities and needs credible strategic partners to support these endeavors. 
In this video, we have shed some light on this beautiful country that is in transition today to a promising tomorrow. We hope to meet you in person on a trip inside Libya to live the reality of the magical beauty of an eternal country called Libya.